In this video, we're going to start taking a look at JavaScript. In the past, we've been looking at these three-tiered architectures uh, and operating, um, for the most part, in tiers two and three. So, doing some Rails development, some minor things in, with with um, databases, but really just using Active Record to access database. But our focus really has been on the application and data services to and then to a lesser extent we've been looking at bootstrap uh, as we get into this last part of the course we'll spend more time on the client level and then I wanted to do that by first uh, looking at JavaScript and spending a little bit of time with uh, uh, with the the console in in Chrome to see how uh, we can do things like manipulate um, some of the data that uh, is generated on a page. So, <clears throat> the, before we, we get into it, I wanted to sp spend a little bit of time looking at um, the document object model, or DOM. <coughs> the, uh, the, the files that we work with, the HTML files that we've been working with, are uh, essentially a tree. They're structured as a tree, so they're, if they're well-structured, um, so that uh, uh, tags are properly contained within other tags, then we get a structure that looks something like this. So our main document is HTML, and then underneath that is a, is a head and a body. There can be a footer as well. There's a number of things that can be contained within that uh, that root element. And then if you take a look at each one of the elements, um, uh, there are sub-elements or sub-tags that are contained within within them. So for instance, a head has a title and sometimes a link, there might be some other things there. And then a body can have any number of, of, uh, of elements contained within it. Um, sometimes they're contained within divs, sometimes they're contained within other things. Uh, and so, you, know, you can see here that I've uh, written the notation here to indicate that you've got a div and then you can have any number of other things. Uh, and then contained within those can be other divs. The other thing that I wanted to mention is that, you know, we've been tagging or we've been adding these attributes to uh, each of these uh, each of these tags, or, or some of them. Uh, and you'll notice that we'll have class you know, in some instances uh, called container or class equals nav. Uh, and these are basically these annotations to these tags that allow us to know that uh, that these annotation, uh, sorry, these uh, tags have to be uh, manipulated or they have to be treated differently. And this is kind of what Bootstrap does. What it, it is doing is essentially looking at each of the classes and then, then determining whether or not something special has to be done to format the appearance of the elements contained within that. Uh, the other thing that is uh, that is available to us is a, something called an ID, and IDs have to be unique. So whereas classes, those can be used in any number of, uh, of elements, these IDs have to be unique. So I could have an ID, for instance, for an underlined, or sorry, an unordered list um, called Fred, and, so, and that has to be unique. <clears throat> I could have another one called special. And so, um, so anyway, we'll see this in uh, what we're going to be doing with uh, with JavaScript here over uh, the next several lectures. So let's take a look at some source code and see how that uh, corresponds, or how the source code corresponds to what we're seeing here in this this image. So I'm going to go to my uh, my code, and so this is. The, uh, the Rails app that we've been working with. And this is the application HTML.erb. This is uh, contained within the layouts uh, directory. And this is essentially is the template for, um, for our main page um, within, the, uh, within the application. Now, um, let me just resize this. OK. so. What we see here is uh, here's my my root node called HTML. Contained within that is something called head. Uh, it has two elements, title and link, uh, and that corresponds specifically to what I had here in this picture. So I've HTML. I've got a section called head, title and link. Uh, there's also a body 
and that contains a div and that has several nested divs uh, within it and if you look at the classes there are different types of classes that are used to annotate each one of those elements uh, and again that's what uh, bootstrap uses to uh, be able to you know allow us to, to format uh, each of those elements in, in a special way depending on how we want it to look okay so uh, one of the things that we can do using uh, each of these uh, uh, these attributes or these uh, these annotations is that we can use that to uh, to search for elements uh, within these uh, with these in, within these documents within the DOM. <coughs> and uh, uh, Chrome has a a special console that we can use to. Uh, to invoke some JavaScript to be able to search for those elements. So if you click on View and Developer and JavaScript Console uh, within the application, that's not where I wanted to do it. So here's the running application. So what I can start to do is I, I can execute some uh, uh, some code within this console to to do things like manipulate the different uh, pieces of our pages. Now, uh, this page here is my is corresponds to my page one at HTML. So I'm going to uh, find that here, and you'll see that uh, you know I've got you know various tags in here, uh, and none of them really marked actually. Now that I look at it. You know there are no no attributes uh, outside of this table um, class. So I'm going to add one actually to this first one, and um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to add an ID. And so I'm going to call this title header. I'm going to go ahead and save that. Actually, let me let me get rid of that first because I want to show you what happens if I have something like that and I can't actually find it. Um, <coughs> so uh, there is a variable called document. This represents the entire um, the entire uh, um, document for the uh, for the program uh, actually for the, the current page and what I can do uh, actually it's the document for the entire uh, the entire application. What I can do is uh, a search and there's this thing called get element by ID and I can try to search for that element that I was just going to name it so uh, uh, what was I going to call it uh, title I'll call it page title I don't remember what I was going to call it before so um, and so let me do a search for that and so when I try to search for that there's there, there's nothing there but if I change this to ID equals I call page title. Am I called it? Yep. I save that and then refresh the page. I can do that same thing again. Search for page title, and that's going to give me the element that uh, uh, that was annotated. And if I mouse over the uh, the the line in the console, you'll see that it it will actually highlight um, that element. Now, one of the things that's actually kind of interesting here is if I set this equal to a variable, so page title, let me call it page title, <coughs> set that equal to this whole thing that I had created. And then do something called, or, uh, if I use this command, enter HTML. What I can do is I can actually change the contents of this uh, uh, of this tag. And so I'm going to say it's equal to experiences of Joe. Joe, oh, let's say Joe's experiences. And once I do that, you'll see that it changes that uh, that tag. 
Okay, so there's a lot that we can do with this. Um, obviously, we don't want to sit in a console and learn our program and have to do all these modifications, but what I really want to do is have a script or Java, some JavaScript code that's able to run within my application so that we can do various manipulations at the browser level um, for the application. So based on whatever the user is doing, mousing over things, clicking on things, we can do various actions that are all client side. We don't need to send any requests to the server to make any manipulations or changes to the application. We don't have to reload any pages. We can do it all in JavaScript. Um, so we're going to spend a little bit of time doing this. In the next video, um, we'll, I'll show you how to add JavaScript to a Rails application using something called jQuery, uh, which is a, uh, uh, a framework for, um, uh, for JavaScript. Uh, and uh, we'll look at how to do that. And then also um, see how we can combine using some JavaScript along with some Bootstrap to do some other things with uh, our page. So anyway, that concludes this video.